Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to episode 105 of the podcast. And today I'm chatting with a new quilting friend, Todd DuVay, and his website is quiltinginthefastlane.com. And that is exactly what Todd is a specialist in, and that is quilting fast through time-lapse videography. And this is really cool. It's basically, uh, and, I, and I've actually been sharing some time-lapse videos here lately just because Todd inspired me to get back into it. And it's basically you just set up the camera and have it set to shoot a photo every you know, five seconds, 30 seconds, however long. And then the camera, usually your phone can do this really easily. It'll compress it and turn it into a video file. And so it can take hours and hours of uh, basically photographs and compress it into a video that's only seconds long. So it's really, really cool. Uh, Todd sent me a post, uh, a comment on YouTube. I went and checked out his work. I just thought it was really neat. Wanted to get to know him better. And that's how this podcast came about. So I hope that you're fascinated with this too. And I hope that it inspires you to give filming a try. Most likely if you have an iPhone or a, a nicer smartphone, you already have the tool that you need to make these videos. You just probably need a tripod or in Todd's case, he uses a specialty gimbal. You don't have to go that high tech. I haven't been, but uh, if you wanna get into this, I think it's a great way to document your quilts uh, because you know there's gonna be a day that your family might wanna look back and say, you know, how was that quilt made? Or there might be a curious grandchild that's like, you know, well, what is all this stuff in this, you know, sewing room for? And being able to show them a video in, you know, 30 seconds or a minute and show all the steps to making a quilt, I think that there's a little bit of quilting addiction packed in there and you never know, that might just be the thing that makes someone curious about, you know, learning how to sew, learning how to quilt. So I'd encourage you to give it a try and I hope that this podcast episode inspires you to turn that on and give it a go. And you don't have to share it with anyone. You can just film a, a time lapse just for yourself. Uh, but Todd actually has a challenge for us. So make sure to listen to the podcast all the way through and you can hear more about his challenge. And I hope that you will participate in it because it's gonna be a lot of fun. Quilters around the world all uh, coming together to share time lapse just a short little time-lapse video. So definitely be looking forward to that interview. That's going to be coming up soon. And if you'd like to jump ahead and get straight to that interview and get to know Todd, you can just check below the video for a timestamp. Uh, and you can basically just jump ahead straight to get to that. But I always like to welcome you into my home, into my studio, and have a little chat and share about what's going on behind the scenes. So that is the introduction to all of my podcasts. Of course, you can skip it if you want, or you can hang out with me as I work on my quilt. So I have a pair of scissors in my hand. I'm waving them around. <laughs> I always get a, a comment whenever I'm gesticulating with scissors in my hand. People are like, put those down, Leah. Don't worry, it's nowhere near my eyeballs, I promise. Um, but yeah, I am clipping away the batting. As I have said before, this is my favorite part to any big quilt project. And this is the step to Trapunto on my Eye of Calm quilt. Here she is looking nice and beautiful. This is a pregnant goddess quilt that I'm working on. And I took a little while time off. I wanted to think about it. Um, there's some lines that I'm actually going to rip out that I'm not happy with. I might even do multiple layers of batting through her belly to make it puff out even more. And, uh, you know, I've, I mean, I've got some puddly fabric issues anyway, so I kind of feel like that's gonna solve that. And then I put it on my machine with a little bit more water soluble thread today and did a stitch, a line of stitching uh, basically a half of an inch around the center goddess area. And that was basically like saying, that's important. I want that to stand out. And that will be, you know, just a layer of puff going all the way around her that doesn't have any quilting going right up to the edge of that applique. And that was just something that was kind of going, I wanted that in there and it wasn't in there. And I kept kind of feeling a little hesitant to start clipping because of that. So once I got that stitched, I'm ready to go. And I'm honestly, the more I think about this quilt, the more I'm thinking minimal quilting. I really want the silk to kind of be the dominant thing. I really want the silk to shine. I don't want to clobber this thing with quilting. So 
it's going to be a lot of puff and very minimal quilting. And I think what quilting there is, it might all be by hand. I don't know. Uh, but I'm having a blast doing this clipping. I just find this really relaxing. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I do have to be careful not to clip into the quilt with my scissors. So I'm being very, very gentle and I keep a hand underneath it the whole time. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's relaxing. It's great work to do in front of the TV. I wish I had a quilt that had Trapunto clipping to do on it all the time. But in fact, this is actually the first quilt I've had in a few years that needed Trapunto clipping. So maybe I need to figure out a way of incorporating that into more of my, my quilts because, you know, I think that we should do this for our favorite step of the process. There are some quilters that hate quilting. They like the piecing, that's fine. There are some quilters that love applique and just want applique projects to do all the time. That's fine. Uh, there's some quilters that don't want to do piecing or applique. They want to get straight to the quilting, and that's fine. Uh, and I just love sitting here clipping batting away. <laughs> so I need to figure out a way where I can just do that. And maybe some, you know, of course, the free mission quilting to create that. Uh, I need to think about that and figure out a way of doing this more often because I absolutely love it. So while I'm sitting here clipping, I can catch you guys up on what's going on around the house. Uh, this week I shared the quilting design, the first quilting design for our scrappy pinwheel block. And here's a picture of it. I just decided to do a very simple super spiral. I did this with walking foot quilting on my home sewing machine. And it's extremely, extremely simple. It's extremely fast. I think I probably quilted this in maybe 10 minutes. And there's a reason because, you know, we've had some pretty intense blocks from block number one on the Friendship Quilt Along. We've had some pretty intense blocks. And if you've fallen behind, this is the month to catch up. We're gonna have another one that's a little bit simpler in, I think that's July or August will be a, a fairly simple block. So that will be another month to catch up, but really you wanna catch up now so that it's not snowballing <laughs> as we go. Cause there are some fairly intense blocks, particularly number 13, which is in November. So you wanna be 100% caught up before we hit November because you'll have three, if you're making a queen or a king, then you have three blocks. You have two of block 12 and one of block 13 to make that month. So if you're wanting it to be done on time before the holidays, really, then yeah, that's, you really need to be caught up. So I'm hoping that when we have these lighter, easier months that you're able to catch up and keep going with your blocks. And by keeping the quilting simple and soft, of course, this is gonna result in a super soft, cuddly quilt for our bed. And that is the whole point. Uh, this quilt along is designed to make a bed quilt. You can do a crib, throw, twin, queen, or king sized. I'm doing a king, so yeah. Definitely getting focused on getting the rest of my blocks quilted so I can film those final videos and putting it all together. And I have been getting a few questions about the putting it all together step as far as the quilt as you go, how to trim the blocks down, how to connect them together. And I already have shot and shared this multiple, multiple times over the years. If you'd like to get a refresher on that uh, whole process, go to leahday.com slash QA. Y G. That's leahday.com slash quilt as you go. And that will show you how to do the, this entire process step by step. And that is shot on the hugs and kisses quilt. So it's even bigger blocks than the ones we're working on. So that's exactly the steps that I'm going to take to put my friendship blocks together. And really in all honesty, there's not really a way of, of speeding this up. Uh, you know, I've looked at, you know, the rows and stuff and the way I laid it out, especially the king size version, I can't put this together. I can't start putting it together until I get everything quilted. Um, if you're doing the smaller versions of the quilt, such as the crib, throw, twin, then obviously you're gonna be able to put some stuff together a little bit sooner. But yeah, this is not really something that you need to be worrying about right this second if you're making the queen or the king size version, just saying. But you know, I've always got, I always got some early Nellies. 
<laughs> on quilt alongs. And at this stage, you know, I'm aware of that. And, you know, I know there's a little bit of stress at that time, you know, just getting it all together, getting the quilt finished. So don't worry, just go to leahday.com slash Q-A-Y-G and check out that tutorial. So speaking of fun tutorials, I have Miss Bunny. This is the Miss Bunny made from spoon flour. And you can see her face was done, uh, that was printed on the panel and she came together super easily. As long as you do not wash the fabric, she comes together super, super quick and super easy. Um, if you do wash the fabric, it's not a deal breaker. You know, if you accidentally forget and throw it in the wash, it's not a big deal breaker. The only place that I had trouble on the one that I washed was the behind her neck. And I just intentionally put some little pleats here behind her neck and that solved it, that sorted it out. Everything else fit together just fine, but there was definitely shrinkage. Uh, the difference between the skirt that was washed and the skirt that wasn't washed was about a half of an inch. So there was that much shrinkage in the fabric from washing, which I found really interesting. Uh, and so, yeah, I made her up a nice lacy cuffs and lacy hem. And I have made two of these. And I realized, you know, I really don't need two more identical bunnies. I have made so many of these guys. So this one is going to be part of a giveaway. So if you would like to enter and get yourself a super cute Miss Bunny, you can keep for yourself or give away to a special, uh, you know, girl that would love a Miss Bunny doll in your life, then uh, all you have to do is join up for my newsletter. And that is at leahday.com slash newsletter. It's a weekly newsletter, it comes out every Wednesday. It just catches you up on all of the posts that I've shared, uh, you know, all of the blog posts, all of the videos that go up. You know, it's easy to miss stuff. So it's nice to be a part of the newsletter so that way you get updates whenever we do sales or discounts, then of course you're the first to know about that too. So yeah, this week, sign up for the newsletter and you will be entered into the giveaway for this cute Miss Bunny doll. And if you're already a member of the newsletter, super, super thank you. You can send us an email at leahday.com slash contact and Josh will add you to the list there instead. So yeah, you can join in no matter what. That'll be perfectly fine. And I can't wait to ship out this Miss Bunny to one lucky person. And I will be picking the winner in next week's podcast. That'll be podcast number 106. So definitely come and check that out and join in the fun. And uh, update on Quilt Fantastic. This weekend, I'm going to be driving to Kingsport, Tennessee to check in on it with Bob and check out the event center where it's going to be held. This is a uh, quilting seminar that I'm putting on with Bob Bolton of the Sewing and, Quilting, Sewing and Long Arm Quilting Center in Kingsport, Tennessee. And it's going to be June 22nd at the MetaView Inn and Convention Center. And if you're interested in joining in and would like to come, uh, all you need to do is contact Bob Bolton and and he will sign you up. He has the tickets and all that good stuff and all the information that you need. We'll have a long arm session in the morning and I will share long arm quilting tips and tricks plus ruler quilting. And I'm hoping, crossing all my fingers and all my toes, that I'm gonna have a new batch of rulers out by then. I am really becoming a little bit annoying <laughs> to some people uh, to make that happen. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, and I'll be demoing, you know, lots of different designs and ideas plus uh you know just coming up with uh really quick ideas for different styles of quilts whether it's a wall hanging whether it's a bed quilt whether it's a throw quilt you know just the things to think about design wise and style wise for our quilts and you know and to have that fit really well on a long arm or on a home machine the afternoon session is on a home sewing machine that's going to be a home sewing machine on a Q zone frame. So that's gonna be fun to demo. And again, that will be focused on, you know, ruler quilting, on different quilting designs for different styles of quilts. And of course, I will be there with books and quilts for you to photograph. And I would love to meet you in person. So come and join in the fun of Quilt Fantastic. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, just check out the page leahday.com slash events. And that will link you over to Bob's website and you can contact him for tickets and more information. Uh, so another thing I realized that I really haven't been talking about much at all lately, and that is Quilty Box. 
And I get this box of fun gear every single month and I figure, hey, I could just start incorporating that into the podcast and show you guys what comes in the box and what you can look forward to if you subscribe to it. Um, so basically it's just a box of fun quilting gear and it always comes with uh, some tools, some thread, some fabric and a little magazine with some patterns. So whatever is in the box, there's usually a pattern or two that is designed to be made from the materials inside. So this month, this is really, really cool. There is a template set to do some curve seam piecing. So if you are at all curious about piecing with curves, then this is gonna be a super cool box. These are templates. And I can tell like, you can peel the paper off the back. And that's kind of a, that looks like a drunkard's path kind of circle to me. But this one, it's a, taking a drunkard's path and putting a stripe in the middle almost. I really think this is cool. Uh, and I think it would be neat to just cut that out and give it some try, you know, give it a try. Some, not all circle templates are created equally. You know, some are easier and some are a fight to get them to go together. I love it when they're nice big curves like this because bigger the curve, then the less fighting you're gonna have to do to put them together. So I can't wait to give that a try and stitch out some curves. And then we have some gorgeous fabrics and these are uppercase fabrics and they're all very graphic, you know, like circles and dots and stripes in really bright colors. And it looks like it's fat quarters. It might be fat eights. I think some of these are fat eights and some of these are fat quarters, but super, super cute. And they're designed, you know, to fit the template. So you can cut out lots of blocks and make that, you know, kind of curved seam blocks. And then there's a pattern in the booklet to guide you through making that. Uh, and it also includes some white Wonderfill a 12 weight thread and some flower head pens. So yeah, super cute quilty box this month. And if you'd like to learn more about quilty box, I have a bitly link for that. And that is Lee, uh, sorry, bitly.com slash, I think it's day quilty box. I'll have to update that. I'll check it out. But uh, you can always find all of the free quilt patterns that I've shared so far for quilty box at leahday.com slash free patterns. And there's also a link there to Quilty Box if you'd like to check it out. So yeah, that is pretty much it for the news around the house. I mostly worked on Miss Bunny this weekend. Did lots of piecing on the treadle. And then uh, I'm finally back to working on my goddess quilt. And another big thing that I've been doing is getting used to a new long arm on my frame downstairs. So I had a big change up at the end of last week. I have a Grace Cunique 21 that is now on my continuum frame downstairs, which means I move my Grace Cunique 15R, well, 14 plus 15R, same machine, just different numbers. They just updated the numbers, that's all it was. And I moved that upstairs to the Q-Zone frame, so now I'll have two long arms going, which is absolutely insane. If you had told me that I would have two long arms in my house, in five years. If you had told me that five years ago, I would have laughed at you. I would have been like, oh no, I would never go long arm. I was really kind of stuck up about it. And I'll tell you, you know, when I gave myself finally permission to be curious about long arm quilting, to learn more about it, to just, you know, to just say, okay, what is this all about? And to rent time on a long arm, in, you know, in my, at a local quilt shop and just try it out. And then most especially to connect you know, quilting softer, quilting simpler, quilting faster. I had, basically, I had no choice. I had to quilt a quilt on a deadline in order to send it to quilt market. And the only option was to quilt that on a long arm. And once I connected, wow, this is actually really, really fast, really, really simple. And it feels so much easier. It really was a game changer. And uh, it makes me regret that kind of, you know, I don't know, I guess I, I just did it the hard way for so long and really beat myself up, you know, for not having the same speed that other quilters had. And I now realize, you know, there's just, it's not a level playing field. <laughs> it really isn't. Moving the machine and moving the quilt, not the same at all. There's absolutely no way it can be. And I'm so happy to be playing with this. It's just such a delight to be able to finish quilts faster and easier. 
and it really does, it's a lot of perspective that I'm gaining from going back to all my blog posts. You know, I've been working on my goddess quilt book just today. I was working through 2013, which was a very painful year because I was doing a quilt along for a goddess quilt. And quite frankly, and this is, you know, I am fairly self-critical guys. And, and that's going to come through in the book. I'm fairly self-critical because I'm able to say, gosh, that was the world's biggest mistake. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful because instead of planning it out and, and do, going step by step and giving a materials list and, and planning the whole thing, it was fly by the seat of my pants the entire year. And so of course it's a mess. It's a complete and utter epic mess. And what's hilarious now is, you know, coming out of that and, and having the perspective of doing, you know, Set, you know, six years now of successful quilt alongs. I know why that was so painful and, and kind of so awful um, because, you know, guys really want to follow along with something that makes sense. And, uh, you know, and so often in so many of those posts, I was writing about being bored and I was writing about, gosh, this is so hard and why does this take so much time? And I'm just so frustrated and annoyed. I can, I can read my, the level of frustration I was feeling, it's coming right off the page. And to have that perspective and know that I was struggling with that, you know, as far back as 2012, you know, 2011, 2012. And it took me until really 2016 to finally do something about it. And, you know, to learn more about long arms and learn more about that different style of quilting. I'm just so thankful that I did <laughs> eventually <laughs> change what I was doing and stop living such a frustrated life. Uh, and I'd say, you know, if this is something that is also really frustrating you, if you're wanting to change up your style, if you're wanting to quilt faster and finish more, just look into renting time in your local area. A lot of quilt shops are offering long arms now where you take a class, it certifies you to be able to rent time on the long arm and then you can rent, usually there's a minimum of how many hours you can rent at a time, you know, one or two hours and then there's a set fee. And yeah, rent some time, take a whole day, get to know the machine, see how it feels to you, see if it's gonna do what you want. Um, because staying stuck is the absolute worst. It's, it's the worst thing possible. And um, having this perspective and going back through all those blog posts, like I said, it's a little painful uh, to see how frustrated and read how frustrated I was for so long until I finally gave myself permission to change and, and, and do something I said I never would do. I, I, at, at many, many times over the years, I said, I'll never go to long arms. And, you know, I finally, you know, had to eat my words. And that's a good thing. I'm not sorry to say that at all. So that's pretty much it for the news around the house. Uh, I am really excited to be sharing some videos on the Grace Cunic 21 and the Grace Cunic 15R uh, that'll be coming up at the end of the week. So make sure to check the Free Motion Quilting Project for those videos. And if you'd like a heads up on the newest videos that I have coming out, I'm always sharing links and videos to my Quilting Friends Club. And you can check that out at quiltfriends.club. This is a membership only group and it's really designed to help support the podcast, to help support all of the free videos and tutorials that I share every week. And it's a supportive, awesome group of quilters around the world. Uh, and it, it just, it's an awesome place to learn and to be inspired. And it's got none of the nastiness <laughs> that everywhere else online seems to be infected with. So if you'd like to check it out, come and see quiltfriends.club. And super thank you to our new members this week, Deanne Morris, Claudia Warren, Todd Duvet, Dahlia Lincoln, and Joan Yowen. Thank you guys so much for joining in the fun. We have about 385 members or so these days 
I love how small the group is, how easily everyone can post and make friends, and then everyone gets to participate in the How Do I Quilt This series, which I will start uh, downloading the photos and working on that video this week. And basically what I do is I take your photos of your quilts and I share three different design ideas for each one. So that way you can understand more about the quilting design process and how design differs, whether you're quilting on a home sewing machine or you're quilting on a long arm, because it, it is actually very different depending on what type of machine and how big your frame is that is going to change how you can quilt your quilts. So I love digging into this. It's definitely helping me build lots of skill for quilting. So come and check out our Quilting Friends Club at quiltfriends.club. And now here is the interview all about time-lapse videography and getting to know my new friend, Todd Dubay. Until next time, let's go quilt. Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and today I'm chatting with Todd DeVay. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Leah. Thank you for having me. Now, a little introduction. Todd is the host of Quilting in the Fast Lane, the art of quilt making through time-lapse photography. And that is what we're chatting about today. Uh, so what is the last time-lapse video that you created? What were you working on last? Uh, well, we're shooting right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're making a time lapse? We're, we're shooting time podcast. lapse right now as we speak. <laughs> that is so uh, cool. I don't, I don't know if it's going to amount to anything or if it's going to be worth looking at or what, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, so have you just gotten <laughs> in the as, habit? Before that, uh, it was yesterday. I was at a, a quilting group and I was shooting time lapse of me ironing fabric <laughs> for this next quilt production. Yeah. So do, have you just gotten in the habit of always shooting? Is that kind of your habit now? I'm just going to turn on a camera. I shoot it with quilt making. I shoot absolutely everything. I shoot and I shoot and I shoot. And I'll probably end up using maybe 20% of what I shoot. Yeah. And then do you it's just delete the excess? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it just chop. You have to chop. You know, you can't put everything in. Do you delete yeah. the excess or do you keep it in an external hard drive or something? I mean, do you save it for uh, another day? Yeah, I was keeping it for a while, but I wasn't doing anything with it. I was just taking up a lot of space on a, an external hard drive I was using. So, you know, I let it go. But, uh, you know, I'm just always working on the next thing. And, and that's enough to keep me interested exactly and why don't you tell everybody how you got into this like what uh what made you turn on a time-lapse camera and and then also share about your gear like what are you using in order to make these videos yeah, okay well i was shooting time-lapse since i was a kid i took a filmmaking class in high school and made a little animated film and with the excess footage that we had in, in the camera i played around with time lapse along with you know my animation and i fell in love with time lapse immediately and this was when i was probably about 14 or 15 so uh, uh back in the 70s <laughs> this was when it wasn't as easy as using an iphone or something like right, that yeah, right it was, it was a, a super 8 camera and you had a cable and a little thing to click with your finger and you had to watch a stopwatch for you know, getting the intervals right. And so I fell in love with time-lapse my whole life. I've always loved it. Uh, there's a couple of great movies out there uh, called Koyan Skatsi and uh, Pau Skatsi. And there's a third one, another Skatsi film. And they primarily tell stories through pictures and music, no dialogue. And it's mostly time-lapse. Mostly time-lapse, some slow motion. And they've been the biggest influences on stuff that I've shot throughout my life. I haven't gotten into it professionally anywhere near that quality or even what people are doing today with digital SL cameras, SLR cameras. So I'm shooting on a little iPhone. I have been resisting smartphones ever since their introduction. I just don't want to be that connected. I'm connected enough here in front of the computer with the work I have to do and and the landline. I just didn't want a phone with me when I left the house. And uh, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. Sorry, this is fascinating. 
Because I don't have my computer screen on. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I got it. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So, um, so you're just shooting with an iPhone, and you, yeah. So, did you start carrying that with you, or are you using it only as a as a video I'm camera, basically? Only as a camera. I just got it last year. I finally bit the dust, and I couldn't ignore this beautiful video quality from this tiny little form factor. And so I bought it specifically for the camera. And, you know, an iPhone is more like a Swiss Army knife. There's a billion things you can do with it, uh, including making phone calls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, but primarily, I'd say 99% of the time, it's my camera. I refer to it as my camera. Yeah, yeah. no, I completely agree with you. In fact, actually, I've been um, putting my phone in airplane mode so often lately that it's practically not a phone. You know, people are calling uh -huh, me and stuff. Right. It's like, I'm sorry, it's... You know, I'm using it as a camera. I don't want to have it ringing, you know, like yeah. right now. My phone's in, in airplane mode, so it can't even be a phone uh, right this second. And one thing I was looking at, if someone, you know, if you already have a dedicated phone and you don't want to do this kind of thing, like time lapse with it, there are a lot of cheaper phones out there with amazing oh. cameras. Uh, so this is something that you can get into, and it like a $100, $200 camera phone can be used just as the camera. So that's an yeah, idea, exactly. too. So tell if, me how if you... iPods had a camera, I would have bought one of those years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. So you're just using the iPhone, but something is holding your iPhone clearly in order to um, hold it in position, you know, to get you a nice shot. Uh, so you need yeah. a tripod of some sort. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? It's a nifty little thing called a gimbal thing held gimbal and I would like to show it to you right now but I'm using it oh. <laughs> <laughs> to the side <laughs> but it's a handheld gimbal that allows you to walk around with the camera and give you really smooth shots you know because it has uh, little gyroscopes in it but one of the great extra features that it has is this little time lapse feature and you can shoot time lapse all kinds of ways with this little handy gimbal it's called a an Osmo 2 mm -hmm. by DJI, pretty cheap, and uh, allows me to move the camera, take a specific amount of frames per minute or per hour, and uh, and it can swing from you know, one side of the room to the next. Yeah. And it's just a wonderful little toy, and I'm going to be introducing some new time-lapse toys in the next... Uh, production or two. Uh, you know, just have to stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah, that'll be neat. And and that's the thing is that the price on all of this stuff has gotten so much cheaper. So back oh, when you were doing uh, this when you were a kid, I can imagine that this was really tough, really time consuming, really expensive. And then now it's gotten. You so know, much... I, was, I was thinking about that when the uh, iPhone 10 came out last year. People were complaining or you know get, getting a lot of notice that it was the first phone over a thousand dollars. Yeah which seemed pretty exorbitant to a lot of people. But then I'm thinking the very first video camera I ever bought was in 1981 and it was 2,500 bucks in 1981 dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and it was 30 pounds. It was this huge <laughs> camera that I had to sit on my shoulder with this tape deck that I wore in a backpack on my back. <laughs> and you know, this iPhone is smaller than the battery of my first camera yeah. and, you know, 10 times lighter yeah. and takes 10 times better video. Exactly. I think there was, there was something I saw once, this was years ago, but it was like, you know, the way that we expected technology to advance was it for everything to get bigger, you know, like, uh, you know, things right. were, were going to become, you know, bigger and bulkier, but instead everything has become smaller and slimmer. And I think that's fascinating. Like the things that you can do with the phone, it's like if you, if you um, put a word processor, like a typewriter and a printer and a, you know, camera and a video camera, all of them stretched everything out, it would take up in a whole desk. Whereas you yeah. know, now it's just this tiny little phone, you can get all of that in one go. So it really is amazing how much technology has advanced and what we can do with these phones now. And the gimbal too, I mean, I've been pricing out that kind of stuff for my DSLR and like the heavier the camera, the more kit and you know, how much expense this stuff takes. And now, you know, the average person for 150, 200 bucks can get this stuff and be able to make amazing videos. Uh, so uh, I think no. it's fascinating. And the quality of the video is like film almost.
almost. Yeah, now. yeah. I mean, it's stuff that you could, you know, ten years ago we'd be like, oh my gosh, this should be in a, you know, in a video, you know, in a camera, in a in a theater. You know, this this should right. this is movie quality basically that we're able to do at home on our own. Uh, so tell me about editing, because obviously editing is a part of this. Uh, what is the software that you're using, if you don't mind sharing it? And how much time does that take? I'm using uh, iMovie, you know, oh, from okay. Apple. Just kind of quick and dirty editing, really fast and simple and uh, gets the job done. I don't rely on a whole lot of special effects or transitions in my productions. It's really pretty much just straightforward, simple editing, mm -hmm. just because I'm going to be telling quilt making stories differently than mm -hmm. the way I've been telling them. Okay, tell me about that. What's your plan? Well, uh, you know, I've got a couple of uh, quilts up on the web right now, and I'm always, I love a good gimmick and a good hook. <laughs> um, a well-crafted gimmick is, is, a, is a turn on for me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, what gimmick am I going to be using? What's the hook I'm going to be using to get people to come back to the website to, to watch another one of these videos? Because, you know, after you've seen one or two, you probably kind of know what you're going to expect and, and that, you know, it's going to be a quilt made very fast. <laughs> yeah. So I need to tell a story and I need to have a theme behind each production. And uh, so the first way I'm telling this story, this next quilt that I'm making, I'm using the quilting community as my background. I'm using all the quilt stores I go to, to do this with, and all the owners are in this video. Nice. Cutting fabric for me. Uh, all the, the quilt groups that I go to. Uh, and later on this summer, and here's, here's the other big hook, you know, not only telling different stories, but my big gimmick is, um, I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> Here's my great big gimmick. This is, we call it the Barbie dream generator, <laughs> <laughs> the power generator. It's a little tiny power generator that I can take with me on remote locations anywhere. You know, uh, to the beach, to the woods, to the shopping mall, wherever. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so cool. To be <laughs> remote locations quilting. Yeah. And I think the hook or the gimmick is to have people coming back is, where is he going to be recording next? Yeah. You know, uh, is it on top of a rooftop? Is it, <laughs> you know, down at the docks? Uh, so I have a million ideas coming up and this year was the big test to see if this little generator would work and that I could do this remotely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the answer is yes, it's uh, gone way past my expectations. I was really hoping if I was going to be on my sewing machine somewhere out in the wild, I was hoping to get an hour's worth of power. Yeah. Well, I've been sewing with this for the last week, and I haven't had to recharge the battery, so it's it's wow. done exceptionally well. Yeah. Well, I, I should also add, because everybody knows I'm a treadle kind of fanatic now, and uh, hand cranks are a thing, too. So if ever you were like, well, let's maybe also grab capture the time lapse of a treadle. I mean, this would, of course, add to your kit. You would be having to haul around a treadle, which is not exactly lightweight. Um, but a uh, hand crank would be even lighter, and then you would capture the time lapse of you hand cranking. That's just a suggestion. It's a whole other rabbit hole, like though. To, I would like to see your uh, <laughs> you know, time lapse of your feet on the on the Yeah, trail. I'll have to shoot a time lapse of that the next time I'm doing something. I've been making bunny dolls and, uh -huh. and doing all of them on my treadle to try and really get going with it. And yeah, I should just grab a camera and shoot a time lapse of that because it is quite time consuming but I would love to be able to capture that and edit it all together. So that would be cool. Yeah, and well, I, have... I have a little proposal for you a little okay. later on when, uh, <laughs> when we have a moment to talk. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I'm always- For in... you and your listeners. <laughs> yeah, oh, there we go. Um, but I would love to, uh, I would love to do more time lapse. And honestly, whenever, um, kind of, let me just tell you the story of how we met online. So everybody it, that knows. That just makes my heart <laughs> swell to hear you say that. <laughs> because um, how we met is Todd sent me a comment on YouTube and it was just a, you know, a, hey, you know, this is so cool. And it was on one of my older videos that happened to be a time lapse.
time lapse. And uh, and then you included a link and that flagged it. So it went into spam. And, that's the, <laughs> you know, I, I caught it because of that. I always check my spam folder and I went through it and then I clicked your link and checked out your website. And, you know, it's like, oh, man, I need to do more time lapse. So you totally inspired me to get back into this form of filmmaking because, you know, you kind of... Oh, you pick up stuff and then you kind of go away from it and you pick it up again. And that's how time lapse has been for me. Uh, yeah. But I love the idea of storytelling and uh, especially going into weird locations. I think that will be super, super cool. So I know. I think so too. I have these, you know, now that I know that it works, I have these huge plans coming up yeah. with, with hundreds of people involved. I've been talking <laughs> about this with several people and, People are so enthusiastically on board yeah. on being a part of this. So I would imagine it's less scary because a time lapse you're not having to talk and you're not having to worry so much. I mean, like I can shoot a time lapse and I don't know almost I don't even worry about having makeup or having a nice shirt on because it's like it's I'm gonna be moving so fast when and I, no one can see me. <laughs> when I started shooting with the quilt groups, you know, and, and giving them my spiel about what I was gonna do and what kind of shot I was gonna create and all this, a lot of people did have concerns about being in front of the camera and I completely understood that and respected it and and I would you know and people who were adamant about it I wouldn't point the camera in their direction when I was making a shot but I would also tell them you know go to the website and and have a look at my work and you'll understand that if I do shoot you, you're not on the screen for very long. Yeah, it's a couple <laughs> you're seconds. There for a millisecond. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, it's really short. And I'll all seen examples of that and see how fast my shots move, and they see them all in their cells in the room in these shots. They all understand that there's not going to be a whole lot of time to focus on them in this production. So everyone is very cool about it now. And and you know, I can set up cameras all over the room now, and no one bats an eye. Good, that's wonderful, and I think that's great too. Because sometimes, you know, when they see themselves then in the video, I don't. For me, that changed things. When I started actually oh, seeing yeah. myself in the video, I started. Um, I don't know. I started changing my video, how I shot a little bit, and taking more pride in my appearance. So. Sometimes that can, that can, you know, turn into other things, which is a good thing, you know, uh, not, none, nothing bad can come from seeing yourself on camera, I think. Uh, yeah. So, excellent. Now, we are seeing a montage of your quilts in the background, and yeah. one thing that I picked up from your about page on your website, which is quiltinginthefastlane.com, and that was that you started quilting in the 80s. So, tell me about that. Tell me about your first quilt and how you got into all of this. This is a funny story that I love to repeat over and over because it irritates my little sister so much. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, In 1980, my mother and my little sister and I moved up to Gig Harbor, Washington after spending our entire lives down in Medford, Oregon, growing up there. And for the first time, my little sister and I were in school together. She was a freshman in high school and I was just about to graduate being a senior. And uh, we took a home economics class together. together. I think we had one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the first half was sewing and the second half was cooking. And she and I had a desk together. And, and uh, so we got to choose our little projects, probably out of a catalog or something. And, and she was going to do a really simple, basic pullover. And uh, I was going to make soft luggage. <laughs> 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 and I took to it like a duck to water. Boy, I loved sewing and just whipped out this soft luggage in no time. It was, I had a ball doing it. And then moved on to the, the cooking part, yeah. which I had a ball in too. But my little sister struggled, Aww. struggled, struggled with the sewing machine. And there was a lot of seam ripping. And, and when the whole entire class moved from the sewing lab to the cooking lab, she was left alone in there for a few more weeks, ripping seams and trying to oh, get no. that all over finished. And, uh, and she's hated me ever since for that. <laughs> <laughs> but after I moved out uh, around 18, uh, one of the things I first bought for myself was a sewing machine because I wanted a quilt. And I can't remember why I wanted a quilt. Uh, I, I knew that no one was going to make me one. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'd been to a quilt show or something. So I made my first quilt 
and loved it. I didn't quilt at the time. I was tying everything down. So mm -hmm. my first three or four quilts were all tied down. Yeah. And I didn't really discover, well, back in the 80s, I don't know if they were calling it free motion, but I was, you it know. Was, it was very limited. There wasn't a lot out there about it. And, uh, and it, you know, it's hard to find a machine quilting information. So it's very understandable. And I should specify, a tied quilt is still a quilt. And that is yeah. still a form of quilting. So no one's knocking it. <laughs> oh, right, right. I totally agree with you. There are a billion different kinds of quilt, quilt making, quilt techniques and a billion times more of that of ideas and inspiration from people. That's, I was just in this discussion last night about how you can give people, you know, 10 bolts of the same fabric and tell them to make a quilt and, and how different everyone's will come up. It's, that's the part of quilt making that I just <laughs> love it. Yeah. The ideas are endless. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I want to taste it all. I want to do everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, your first quilt that you made that you really, really wanted, and I, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Most likely it was that first apartment kind of thing, and you just wanted it to be yours. You didn't want to go and buy yeah, a comforter. Exactly. You wanted yeah. to make something of your own to celebrate. So um, tell all me right. about that first quilt project. It was, I dove right in. It was <laughs> a very complicated pattern. And and at the time, you know, I was working with cardboard templates that I cut out myself. And then you'd cut out all the pieces with scissors for days and weeks. And you'd get carpal tunnel syndrome. And, and <laughs> uh, rotary cutters really weren't a thing yet. Yeah. And they didn't start becoming a thing until I was just kind of getting out of quilting. I remember buying my first one and feeling very awkward using it and not really uh, understanding what I could do with it. And then I stopped quilting just because I was moving from home to home and returning to school and, you know, getting on with different parts of my life. And so when I got back into quilting, uh, yeah, I still had this rotary cutter and, and watched a million YouTube videos on how to use it properly. And Wow, what a difference, you yeah. know, as, as returning to quilting, the tools that are available now that weren't available to me 25 years ago, 30 years ago, just make quilting so much fun yeah. and so easy and so fast. And everything about quilting is so much better now than I remember it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about is your perspective, because you took a 25 year break. And that is a huge amount of time to step away from a craft. I, well, I had other creative outlets. Sure, I was sure. Doing all kinds of, uh, mostly it was video work. I was working in the video field for a while in video production. And uh, then returned to school to become an animator and worked in animation for a while. And uh, then moved up here to Port Townsend, Washington, where all the animation jobs are. <laughs> and uh, kind of transitioned into sort of a freelance graphic artist and film editor or video editor. Okay, cool. I mean, and it sounds like now this is such a perfect mesh of you, what you do professionally and then now quilting adding to that. Uh, but what I was going to say is it's just uh, your perspective of having that break of you know, going from quilting in the 80s to quilting now, you got back into this in 2017, right? Right, right, right. Right, so what is your perspective? Well, you know, the thing is that I moved up to this house that I live in about 13 years ago and has a beautiful studio up here on the second floor and I set it up as a quilting studio mm -hmm. immediately. I mean, right when I moved here, and we were remodeling the house. This was built as my quilting studio with all the cubby holes and all the stash that I had been carting around with me for 25 years from storage to garage to, you know, wherever I could keep it. So now it was all here and then it sat. The studio just sat for 10 years. I just wasn't finding my quilting mojo yet. Mm -hmm. I, again, I my creative, energies were going in other directions so I was busy uh, just not with quilting yeah. but in 2017 uh, my husband bought me another sewing machine and it and it sat on the table uh, for a couple of months and then sometime in February I just started picking up fabric and playing with it and 
uh, I started sewing. Yeah, and I have not been able to turn it off since. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just something about that clicked, and all of a sudden it became... You got back into it right then. And that's wonderful. I think that's part, terrific. Oh, I know. Actually, part of it. Oh, okay. I will now confess what it was <laughs> now that I think about it. I was getting a new puppy, or I had a new puppy, uh, Gilda Radner, who's in my lap right now. Aww. Yep. <laughs> Let's see if I can wake her up here. There she is. That's oh it's my Gilda gosh. Radner. It's a, um, just to describe it, her for the um, for the podcast, it's a really cute boxer. Is that right? She uh, is a Boston Terrier, Boston a redhead Ter Boston Terrier. And she's, she's like my third. red and white. She's so cute. See, she, she's my third Boston Terrier. They've all been wonderful dogs, but I swear to God, Leah, this is the most affectionate dog Aww. I've ever had. <laughs> she is such a lover. And that is one thing that's in all of your videos is your dogs are always showing up helping. in your videos somewhere. Yes. They're helping you They're out help. when you're basting or something like that. And I love that. It's terrific. <laughs> so uh, she well, inspired you. To... In all of them. Not in all of them. Okay. Did she inspire you to get back into quilting? No, oh, well, actually what it was, uh, I bought this dog and about a year later, I got a, uh, uh, email from somebody who was referred to me from the breeder who wanted to know what my experience with the breeder was and should she buy a dog from her. And so I wrote back to her and she wanted to adopt Gilda's sister. Ah. And, uh. And we hit it off right away with the, it was a couple down in Oregon and we hit it off immediately and uh, they came up to visit with their dog. And it was at the time, actually maybe it was before then, that we were sharing pictures back and forth over the internet. And in the background of one of the pictures, I saw a quilt, ah. a, a puppy picture with a quilt in the background. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I said, Nicole, are you a quilter? And she said, yeah. And I said, I'm a quilter too. <laughs> now, I said that after not having sewn a single stitch for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, hey, you, once you're a quilter, and you're I always a quilter. Myself, <laughs> now, if I'm going to talk the talk, I better walk the walk. And yes. so actually, it was Nicole who kind of inspired me to get back. Uh, you know, was... if I was going to tell her I was a quilter, then I should show her something. I should yeah. back it up. Yeah. So I had a bag full of my mother's clothes. Uh, she had moved from her home to a nursing home, and I took all of her most colorful clothes because she had a lot of colorful clothes. She also had a lot of beige, <laughs> but I didn't take that. And so I cut off all of her clothes and made a quilt, and I was going to give it to her for her birthday because a quilt that I had given to her 25, 30 years ago was lost or stolen at the nursing home, and she was kind of heartbroken about it, but... It was always, always my least favorite quilt. <laughs> and so I didn't miss it, and I was happy to make her a new one. So I made this fantastic one out of her clothes. And I loved it so much, I kept it. <laughs> so I made a second quilt out of her clothes, and it was all the same colors. But it was just a different block. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my most favorite things about that quilt from my mother, not only was it her clothes on the front, but on the back, I put swatches of each of those clothes with photographs of her wearing those oh, clothes. Oh, that is so special. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, I loved it. And it wasn't organized as well as it could have been. So I can't wait to do that again. And I really want to do it with a baby quilt, you know, yes. get both families uh, clothes yeah. <laughs> into a baby quilt and then have sort of a legend on the back by, you know, who's grandma and grandpa, who's yeah. mom and dad, you know, <laughs> who's brothers and sisters. That would be uh, wonderful. So, someday. Yeah. Uh, there, I mean, the, the list is endless as always. Uh, yeah. so, oh, tell me about blocks. You said that you do a lot of repetitive block patterns. Do you have favorites that you go back to time and time again? Uh, are there some that you... I ask that because normally when I'm quilting like you, Leah, is that I want to try new things. You know, I want to try something I've never tried before. Uh, my philosophy lately for making quilts is to do something that scares me. Good. Uh, <laughs> and I... And I take them on. And what I'm finding with each progressive quilt is I am less and less scared of, 
of anything anymore. I look at a picture and I see it really complicated and I think, well, of course I can do that. (laughs) But there's still some hurdles to get past. Uh, I would love to really excel on some curved piecing. I am not there yet. (laughs) It's tough. I've got a billion quilts on my bucket list of things I want to do and try and things I've never tried before. And and, uh, I get... uh, I, I lose focus. So, yeah, <laughs> so, that's really easy. But the repeating block right now just works really well with the time lapse format. When I start getting more creative, more curvy, more original sort mm-hmm. of stuff, I have to tell the story differently. And I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, it might require more slow motion shots. Um, it might require slowing the, the time lapse down so it's not so rapid. I haven't, I don't know yet. Yeah. All the productions I have coming up are pretty fast paced. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, excellent. Uh, so how have your tastes changed since the 1980s versus today? I mean, that's huge, huge amount of time. I'm sure that you like different colors or has it stayed the same? Which has happened? That, that has definitely stayed the same. I have, since I was a little kid, I have always liked the entire color spectrum. And I have always liked the entire color spectrum super saturated, yes. like Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, bright. Uh, so when you say, you know, ask me if I have a favorite color, I, I just can't nail one. Um, it's really the whole spectrum. And it shows up in all my work. My entire life, my board tends to look very bright and rainbowy, and uh, I think a good in, a good uh, inspiration for me would be Peter Max. You know, that's very bright colors and, and thick black lines. Uh, but I, if I had to call, a, if I had a style that I had to call it, I have been for years. I've been calling my style Technicolor vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Technicolor vomit. So my quilts have always been bright, uh, always multiple colors. Um, I'm doing one that's just limited really to kind of the cool colors, uh, blues and greens and purples. And uh, it's a it's a it's a monster of a quilt. <laughs> it takes up a lot of fabric. It takes <coughs> excuse me, it takes five times as much fabric as a normal quilt top would take. So it's really heavy. Yeah, and is that like a fabric folding technique? What are what is causing it, it to a need a lot of fabric folding? Like um, it's based on a pattern I got off the internet by a woman named Chelsea Spade of uh, uh, JadedSpadeCreations.com, and it was called Pinwheel Surprise. And I just did a little tiny variation on it and and changed the look of it. And I come after. Uh, well, I'm still, I am still preparing all the fabric. Like I said, it takes a lot. Uh, in fact, each block takes 144 pieces of fabric. Oh my gosh, that is a and lot. So I completed the. Oh, I didn't complete, but I placed all the fabric down for the first time last week, just to see what it would all look like and come together. And this is what it looks like. Let's see it. Oh my gosh. So it's kind of a mixture of cathedral window, but it looks like it's a cathedral window that's exactly. been pieced and more it's complex. Exactly, it's a variation on the cathedral window. Wow. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous and so complex. <laughs> so. And I, it's it's much easier than I was anticipating. It was surprisingly simple. It's just that it takes a lot of preparation. Yeah, I've to get your colors right and make sure those everything's... Those little curves for weeks. <laughs> and did you hand stitch that? Or did you... You know, I started to, but there's almost 2,000 pieces. So I, uh, someone last week taught me how to use the blind hem stitch on the sewing machine. <laughs> and you just said, I'm going to do it that way from now. I, yeah, I don't blame that's you. the way I've been doing it. That makes sense. So quick rapid fire. Do you uh, work on multiple projects at a time or just one? I have been asking every single quilter I know lately of that same question. And every single one of them has 25 things going at the same time. Yeah. I, 
it's for me it's one project at a time and i think the reason is is that i'm come i'm pretty much kind of doing two projects at the same yeah, time because you're filming. The, the quilt and the video and the irony of quilting in the fast lane is that it takes five times as long to make a quilt <laughs> yeah because you've got to think about your shots and get the camera set up and then if the cameras yep. if your phone's died then you got to go charge it and the whole night yep. it just adds yeah. to the complication there's a, there's a lot more to the video production than the quilting part absolutely. it seems like absolutely <laughs> but you know there are both projects that grow at the same time because i'm I'll quilt all day and shoot all day, and then at night I'll edit all night. Yeah. So they both grow at the same time, and then by the time the quilt's done, the video production's done. Exactly. It's, it's it's such a great feeling to have two things done at once. It's it's twice as fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have a favorite fabric right now? Are you using batiks or prints or solids? Yeah, you know, that's a good question too, because much of my quilting for the last few years has been solely relying on clothes. <laughs> you really? know, have all different kinds of fabrics, all kinds, and including some lizard skin or a rhinestone <laughs> pulling purse, you know, stuff that can't really be washed. Yeah. And right now this complicated quilt that I'm working on, it's the first time in decades that I have bought fabric specifically for a specific quilt. And to have all that beautiful cotton just <laughs> glide through the machine, uh, just like butter. Yeah. That's my favorite fabric right now. I is bet it is. <laughs> hot fabric. It's so really wonderful. Me, real quick, how do you stabilize your fabric when you're doing uh, quilts from clothing? Do you use a stabilizer or do you just I let do. it go? I do. Uh, I did a baby quilt that had a lot of black velvet in it from my mother's coats. And, you know, black velvets are really stretchy all over the place fabric. And I did use a really heavy stabilizer on the back of it. It helped a lot. Okay, excellent. And then when something's really thin, like a cotton lawn, like a t-shirt, would you put something behind that to stop it from stretching? Oh, too? yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. And then do you have a favorite rotary cutter brand or thread brand? In fact, I'm really bad about changing my blades, changing my needles, uh, paying attention to threads and, and uh, you know, I, I, I still kind of sew like a big dumb old man. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You know, I just, I like to ask these questions because I think it gives us a good perspective on how many different ways there are to make quilts and that, you know, to some people like, you know, they're gearheads and they're all, you know, all in on one brand or something like that. And then other people don't care at all. Right. You know, I use the cheapest rotary cutters that I can get a hold of, but I always use titanium blades. So I'm a stickler for the titanium blades because they last a lot longer. That's just my tip. Uh, yeah. So, okay, last question. You have just gotten back into this. You are making videos. Where do you see this going? And what are you most looking forward to in the next five years? All of these are good questions. And I've been thinking about this because you wrote them to me earlier. <laughs> five years from now, I really don't know. Um, right now, I feel like I'm just building a portfolio of video work. Um, we'll see where that takes me. I think right now, more than anything, it's just given me a lot of opportunities to meet a lot of people, especially if I'm taking this camera and project out publicly and I'm like on the sidewalks uh, in town and people are gathering around me to see what's going on. I don't want to even getting great time lapse footage, but I'm meeting new people and who knows where that's going to take me. And sure. just the possibilities are just endless. Absolutely. So I'm keeping a very open mind about where it's going to take me right now. I'm just inviting people to watch, have fun and enjoy yourself. And uh, I know it's not for everybody. I know it's probably a very limited uh, audience. I get that. Uh, not everybody's into quilt making, not everyone's into time lapse, and there's probably even fewer people who are into both. <laughs> hey, but you know, those of us that enjoy it, that like to geek out on it and see the entire quilting process, we're going to love it. So I say keep there doing it and do what you love. There are and, and another reason why I primarily did the very first one was that I'd finished a baby quilt and did Trapunto for the first time and had such a blast doing it, and I took a few pictures and one night over dinner with friends, I was complaining that I didn't take enough pictures 
Uh, I wish I had before it was all finished with because it was such a neat process and I had so much fun doing it. And my friend said, well, have you ever thought about combining your time lapse with quilt making? And it's like this kind of bricks landed on me. I'd never thought about it before and it was so obvious. And so I ran with it and I had so much fun the first time I ever did it. And, I, and when it was all finished, I said to myself, I'm going to be doing this from now on. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I made it originally to show my next niece, who had a baby, uh, what it takes to make a quilt. And uh, you know, it, it ended up being so much fun for me. But that was kind of the original motivation to start it, was to show people what it takes yeah. to make a quilt. Absolutely. And I love that because you really get that feel for how much time it takes to pull fabric just to even pick your colors because you show all of that, uh, you know, pulling oh, even more so in this next production where I'm working with the quilt stores and the quilt community. Yeah. And I'm trying to really tell that story about the birth of a quilt and how oh, it I happens, but this whole community behind it. Oh, and that's gonna be yeah, if I can get this done by a certain uh, <laughs> deadline, I may enter it into a show and do some time lapse of that. So oh, that would be great. Oh. <laughs> well, I, hope, I hope it all works out and you're able to get it done and I can't wait to see that video. So thank you so I much. Have one, I oh, have okay. one more uh, uh, proposal for you as okay. I spoke earlier. I'm thinking about my sequences in this next production about where I'm going to be quilting remotely. One of the sequences near the end of this production, I'm going to be quilting side by side with other quilters here in my community that I respect and admire and, and ooh and all ah their work and they're all in on it. So we're going to be like at tables quilting side by side with each other. And as I was thinking about my conversation with you coming up and realizing you probably have a lot of listeners. I was thinking, you know, a tagline on the end of that sequence where I'm with other people would be to have time lapse of other quilters from around the country. And you're this perfect megaphone to ask all of your <laughs> listeners to, uh, to shoot a little one shot time lapse of them working on their quilts and send it to quiltinginthefastlane.com and maybe I will use that as another sequence in the end of this production of quilters all around the country shooting time lapse. That would be amazing. Okay. Starting with you, Leah. Yes. I would like to have a piece of time lapse of you working on anything. Okay, uh, I will absolutely do that. The idea sounds very intriguing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, um, uh, what- Most camera or most phones will record have a little time lapse thing in it that shoots once every five seconds so if you left the camera on for an hour that would give me roughly 25 seconds of time lapse to work with okay so a one hour time lapse basically you just turn the camera on set it on a tripod or a stand of some sort and then uh -huh. let it let it play let it time lapse yeah you see there's a little time lapse feature in in, in most cameras on phones I've noticed yeah so I just look for that lapse thing and okay and then does yeah, it let it run a, for an hour and does send it, need it to, to me a... and I'll make you a star <laughs> <laughs> does it need to be a particular file format an mp4 or just whatever comes out of the camera is that fine whatever comes out of the camera I can convert it on my end if there's any issues okay you're a video expert you've got it down so okay everybody <laughs> make time lapses and send them to quiltinginthefastlane.com and we are going to make an amazing massive worldwide time lapse video with Todd oh, that'd, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, let's say the deadline is August 15th okay August 15th you got to send them in so everybody let's get busy and grab our phones and do a quick time lapse and send them all to Todd I cannot wait to see how this turns out and you may just yeah, end up with a lot more than you expect we don't know. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> so thank you again so much for being on the show I had a great time talking to you today about time lapse and quilting and everything else Thank you so much for taking the time to spend the morning with me, Leah. This has been really fun on my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Ew. Yay, we got it. <laughs> and, and in fact, if you're still rolling, I have a birthday present here that I haven't opened up yet. It's from my sister-in-law. Okay, you want to open it on camera? And your she is my biggest supporter of my quilt making. Oh, that's wonderful. I have a feeling I know what 
this is. It looks like a <laughs> I, layer I, cake to me. Well, yeah. <laughs> I had asked her for a fat quarter of something that reminds her of me. Okay. A friend of mine has made a quilt for her 50th birthday where she did just that. She asked all of her friends for a fat quarter that reminded them of her, and she would make a quilt out of it. Nice. And I thought, oh, I'll do that for my 60th birthday, so I'll start collecting now. But oh. I have a feeling this is a little more than a fat quarter. <laughs> yeah, that's looking like a fat quarter pack. Well, immediately she knows me all too well. She gave me some socks with hamburgers on them. <laughs> <laughs> hamburgers are my favorite food. And uh, perfect. Oh, super and, cute. And here's some. It looks like she sent me five yards of fabric. Oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> and, she's very supportive of your quilting habit. And oh. they're all dog oriented. I'm. I'm apparently that transparent <laughs> <laughs> they're super cute i can just describe them i can see part of what they look like they're some of them are super bright colors and dog bones and some of them are uh yeah like there's a rainbow with dog bones i love yeah, that like, paw prints and then there's grateful, a grateful dead bones <laughs> yeah, super cute and that one's kind of a psychedelic dog all the dogs are stacked up and kind of dancing Oh man, those are so cute. Kind of a blue print with dogs and, and I think it's just dogs, not cats. Very, uh, very cute. I'm going to have to uh, think of some obscure dog themed quilt. To yeah, make with or like, maybe make a t shirt. You know, it looks like you've got enough fabric to make a, a uh, button down shirt. You know, I've never sewn clothes in my life. Really? I learned from my little sister, it's impossible. <laughs> so much for sharing that with us and happy birthday Todd I hope it's Thank a great day so much Leah